fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up the kingdom that cannot be shaken. In the name of Jesus, enemies defeated, and we will shout it out, shout it out. God is fighting for us, pushing back the darkness, lighting up Before we begin the construction of a building, the master architect draws up a blueprint according to which the building is then constructed. The blueprint has the general layout and the design for the building. In a similar way in God's Word, we discover a blueprint for the building of strong local churches, churches that can, can have impact and influence on the world around them. On the program today, we talk about two important aspects of God's blueprint for local churches the pillar of truth and the army of God. Stay tuned for this very important message. Greetings and uh, thank you for tuning in to Living Strong today. Uh, over the last several weeks we've been uh, talking about the house of God, uh, raising up local churches uh, according to God's blueprint. And uh, uh, we've been exploring different aspects of God's blueprint uh, that we find in New Testament scripture uh, for the local church. Essentially what we are saying is that we need to raise up local churches according to the blueprint God's given to us in His Word. And as we do that, we will be able to build up churches of impact and influence uh, as, as, uh, as desired by God. Uh, we're using a free publication that's available from uh, us here. Uh, it's called The House of God. You can download it for free from our church website. Or if you'd like to have your own printed copy, you could write to us, send us your our postal address and we'll be able to send, the, send you this book so that you could use it uh, as we uh, go along in this series of studies together on the house of God. Uh, I have on the program with me Pastor J. Kumar Isaiah uh, who is our associate pastor here at All People's Church in Bangalore and uh, we will be discussing uh, two important aspects, two additional aspects about the house of God. So thanks today for being here with, uh, on the program and thanks. as we uh, continue the discussion uh, on the house of God, uh, we'd like to talk about uh, the house of God being uh, the pillar of truth. And uh, Paul, the apostle Paul, brings this out in his writing um, to Timothy in First Timothy chapter three and verse fifteen. Paul tells Timothy, you know, he says, "If I am delayed, I, I write to you so that you may know how you ought to conduct yourself in the house of God, which is the church of the living God." The pillar and ground of truth. Would you be able to just talk to us here on, on this, that the local church uh, being the pillar of truth, and, and what, what does it mean to, uh, to a local community of believers? It's very obvious that uh, God has actually placed the church as a, as a lighthouse mm. and as a, as a body which is supposed to be 
um, showing to the community around that this is the truth. Right. Uh, to be showing to the community, especially in uh, in a time and day when truth is being uh, relativized and mm -hmm. when nothing is uh, you know uh, absolute and uh, truth becomes a casualty in the mm -hmm. whole process it's especially true it's especially uh, important that the church grabs a hold of this that uh, as a body we are collectively called to represent truth and we are collectively called to uh, to show mm -hmm. uh, the world around that right. uh, what is the truth we are also reminded of um, you know the words of Jesus in the Lord Jesus in John chapter 17 and verse 17 mm -hmm. he says sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so mm. uh, which means that uh, as a body of believers we need to be uh, first of all committed uh, to the truth, to the truth. Uh, right. and uh, he is very clear he says that his word is truth mm. that the word of God is truth so we need to be committed to the word of God studying the word of God uh, obeying the word of God, uh, the instructions there and, and carrying, out, uh, carrying out what the word of God says. So his word is truth. Um, secondly, that our own lives personally need to be aligned to the truth, Correct. which is there in the word of God. Mm -hmm. Whatever values are there, whatever instructions are there. So that's the first thing. And secondly, uh, also the responsibility uh, of the church to raise up people who will be upholders of truth. Mm -hmm. um, not only uh, be committed, not only be aligned to the truth, but also uphold the truth wherever they are, right. when they go, in, go out into the world and uh, wherever they conduct their business, the mm -hmm. seven days of the week, wherever they are that um, they will be upholders of the truth. Sure. Mm -hmm. So the responsibility of the leadership to, to preach, to teach uh, and equip uh, the believers uh, on these lines that we need to hold on to the truth, that our reference point, our plumb line is the word of God. Mm -hmm. So uh, we go back to it um, and we refer to it and stand by it so the responsibility for us is to um, preach, teach, equip, inspire um, so that uh, they will be empowered by the truth. Mm -hmm. The whole church will be empowered by the truth and will be able to take a stand uh, for the sake of truth mm -hmm. uh, wherever they are. Yeah. Yeah. I, think, I think that's a very, uh, very important uh, uh, <coughs> point that you brought up Jay because uh, uh, you know, it's one thing to have truth inside the church mm -hmm. uh, but if, uh, if, 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 uh, if God's people don't uh, stand up for it outside in the world where it really matters mm -hmm. uh, where you know there are questions there are challenges but that's where we need people who can uh, stand up for the truth mm -hmm. uh, uh, because it's out there that it really matters and, and that's where the truth needs to be upheld that there that this is what God says and this is how we're supposed to live and mm -hmm. uh, this is right and the other is wrong we need to really build up people who will be upholders of truth in the world where it matters and I think uh, just to add to some of what you've said here I think uh, Another important aspect um, that the local church must be careful of is to beware of compromise mm -hmm. um, in order to be uh, a pillar of truth, um, especially today in today's world and in, 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 in the Christian world. There is, there is so much of compromise and, even if, and it comes even from many uh, leaders and people of uh, influence in Christendom, in the church, um, mm -hmm. in the worldwide church. And, and when they begin to compromise and, and permit um, you know, gray area to come into uh, the church, so to speak, uh, it brings so much of confusion uh, into the body of Christ. Uh, it's like what Jesus said in Matthew 5 and verse 13. He said, you know, you are the light of the world, you are the salt of the earth, mm -hmm. but if salt has lost its flavor, then it's of no value. Uh, and so uh, I think compromise is one of those things that causes us as believers to lose our flavor and we no longer begin to have, no longer have any more influence yes. in the world around us because uh, we've compromised and uh, we've lost a flavor. We're no longer salty. We, we no longer have that uh, effect on the world. And uh, just to add another p thought here to what you were saying uh, about the local church being the pillar of truth, I think it's also a, a responsibility both on the, those who teach and preach the word of God and even on, on the believers that uh, we need to provide uh, biblical response to the current issues, the challenges that are faced in our day. The society is struggling with lots of things. Uh, things like issues like divorce or uh, uh, same gender uh, marriages and, and, and uh, a lot of is issues that society is grappling with. Mm -hmm. We need as the church to provide the response to that. And of course the response has to be 
a voice of truth, uh, not of compromise, not of uh, diluting the truth, mm. but we need to uh, be a voice that responds to those issues uh, from the Word of God and s saying, this is what the Word of God says, this is what truth is. So really, let's just talk about, and maybe you could throw some light here on, uh, you know, uh, how could a local church really work this out mm. uh, on, on trying to be that pillar of truth and trying to raise a people of truth? And how can, you know, a pastor listening to us or, uh, you know, a people in the church listening to us saying, look, that's nice, You're, you guys are sitting there and talking theory. Mm -hmm. uh, how do we actually do this? Yeah. Yeah. I think first and foremost uh, is personally for me to get into the word, for me to acknowledge that mm. I need to get aligned to the truth and, uh, you know, stay with the truth. Um, personally, and of course, then teach the congregation. You know, that's the that's the, that's the thing. That's where we start. That um, the teaching is sound. It is uh, uncompromising. It's undiluted. Doesn't waver from the truth. So you go ahead and teach the congregation, and uh, and also secondly to address real life issues. Like we, like you said, we we face all these issues, and these issues seem to be compounding and increasing uh, every day. Uh, that problems are becoming even more complex, and it's as if somebody's sitting there and uh, you know, kind of uh, devising new ways of uh, you know doing things in a in a way that is opposite of truth. But then we these need to be addressed in the church. There's no point in uh, us shying away from addressing these truths. Yes, some are difficult, complex, but it needs to be addressed. So right. these real life issues need to be addressed, mm -hmm. and the Word of God, uh, the reference of the Word of God brought in uh, so that people know that this is the truth and this is a departure from the truth. Uh, but the thing is, whenever truth is spoken, it needs to be spoken in love. Because we can speak the truth, we can hit people with the truth, beat them down with the truth, but it has to be spoken in love mm -hmm. if, uh, if it needs to bring in reconciliation, if it needs to bring in uh, repentance, so uh, it needs to be spoken in love. Yeah. So the third thing is again to empower and encourage the believers to live by the truth uh, in the world where it really matters to tell them that yes uh, church is more than you know what happens on a sunday morning um, church is the people of god and so wherever you are you carry the presence of god you uh, you represent god where you are so therefore uh, in your context you represent truth you be a speaker of truth and also to encourage believers to take up opportunities to bring in kingdom values to bring in kingdom perspectives um, in various uh, situations. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. As, as uh, local churches begin to take on this uh, aspect of uh, being the pillar of truth, uh, there will be challenges that mm. uh, local churches will face and, and pastors and leaders will definitely face. And I think, you know, just to, uh, the fact that uh, some of these challenges could be very complex, you know, uh, maybe in terms of ideologies, in terms of philosophies that are out there, mm questions that are out there, young people asking, you know, evidence for God and, uh, and uh, um, uh, why, you know, what's different among all the world religions. So a lot of questions that, that could come ar uh, could arise, a lot of issues that need to be addressed, but truth needs to be spoken. And so I think uh, our challenge would be uh, leaders spending that much more time of preparation and, and, and preparing themselves to be able to address these uh, issues effectively uh, that I feel is important. Uh, protecting, protecting believers from just popular opinions mm. and the challenging believers to live by the truth rather than go with the flow of mm. the crowd and, and what seems to be very popular is again another challenge and of course uh, as I mentioned earlier I think a challenge would be uh, is, is sometimes we need to stand against the voice of compromising leaders. Mm -hmm. So if a world Christian, I'm talking about Christian leaders uh, who may be world renowned uh, but if they are compromising then uh, we definitely need to stand against those things and stand by the word of God and be true of, uh, and really uphold the truth. And so these are some of the challenges that we could envision uh, even in a local church, but uh, that's something God's really called the church uh, to be, to be pillars of truth. Mm -hmm. Let's just move on to another aspect of God's blueprint that we see in uh, the New Testament, which again is a very interesting mm -hmm. uh, blueprint uh, that we find uh, about the local church where uh, over and over again in the New Testament, especially in the writings of the Apostle Paul, uh, we find the idea uh, of the truth concerning the church being an army. Mm -hmm. And in fact, Jesus himself presented that when he talked about the church in Matthew 16. He said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against mm -hmm. it. So he's saying really, uh, he's going to raise up a church that is going to be on the offensive. Uh, it's going to be a militant church, a church that is going to go against the very powers of hell. Uh, and the powers of hell will not be able to stop it. 
and uh, in, in Paul's writings, he talks about, he refers to his fellow workers as soldiers uh, with him. He talks about uh, warring a good warfare uh, in, in First Timothy chapter one and verse eighteen. Uh, in First Timothy six twelve, he talks about fighting the good fight of faith. Mm. Um, and then in Second uh, Timothy chapter two, verse three and four, he talks about enduring hardship as a good soldier. And even about his own life, he concludes by saying in 2 Timothy 4, 7, he says, I've fought a good fight. Right. So this whole sense of uh, a militancy, this whole sense of uh, being an army uh, is, uh, is part of the church. And so uh, I, I think um, when we raise up strong local churches, uh, we need to build this in uh, to the heart and the life of the church, mm. that we are an army. We are the army of God. That we are wrestling against spiritual powers. We're not wrestling against flesh and blood. That's mm -hmm. not our uh, calling and it's not our intent. But we are wrestling against demonic powers. And that's a call for the church. Uh, so we need to really uh, develop uh, in the hearts and minds of people, mm -hmm. uh, God's people, a sense of spiritual militancy, knowing that we are uh, uh, fighting uh, and engaged in a warfare. Mm -hmm. uh, and Paul brings it out in several places. And so we need to train believers in mm -hmm. spiritual warfare. So if we are really going to raise up churches, um, local churches that are going to be the army of God, mm -hmm. uh, we need to train believers uh, in this spiritual conflict. Uh, we can't pretend that, you know, uh, being a believer is all nice and soft and, you know, sitting on a nice cloud that will just float into heaven mm -hmm. someday. But, mm -hmm. uh, but really, we are an army. We are soldiers in the army. Uh, we are in, engaged in a conflict. And so we need to train people uh, 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 for spiritual conflicts. So maybe, uh, Jay, you could talk to us a little bit about, you know, uh, how do we go about this? You know, what are some of these, these spiritual weapons and, 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 and in what ways can we actually uh, equip believers mm -hmm. so that the local church can be the army of God? Yeah, so like you said, uh, you know, uh, being a believer is not all uh, 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 soft and cushy and uh, it's not an easy life because uh, the minute we decided to... Mm -hmm. uh, to become followers of the Lord Jesus, we actually signed up for battle. Mm. That it, it's real, uh, and uh, the spiritual entity, which is our enemy, uh, is very, very real. And uh, so the battle is raging. So uh, we, as believers, need to be uh, equipped, uh, need to be trained, uh, need to open our eyes and see that yes, there is a battle. And uh, and it's amazing how we, as believers, have been resourced for this battle mm. with the weapons which are which are really mighty in God. Uh, one of which is the name of the Lord Jesus, the authority which He gives us, the Word of God itself, which, uh, which is described as mm -hmm. the sword of the Spirit, mm. the blood of uh, the Lamb, and the completed work of Jesus on the cross, um, which gives us our victory, our position in Christ, mm. who we are in Christ, and our position, the fact that we are seated with Him in the heavenlies, uh, the full armor of God, starting mm. with the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of uh, righteousness, mm. and the shield of faith, and, mm. and so on. So prayer and intercession, and praise and worship, and so on. So. We as believers, we need to start using, uh, right. uh, first we need to know that we have these weapons and we need to start using them uh, intently um, for battle. Sure. We also need to understand that we as believers are an anointed mm. for battle, anointed right. for this very purpose, that we are empowered by the Holy Spirit mm. to fight these battles. So we have been resourced, we've been anointed by the mm -hmm. Holy Spirit. What we need to do is just intently or purposefully move into a battle and, uh, mm. and, and fight, fight this uh, good fight of faith. Mm. What we see in the word is that the local church, uh, you know, as a local church, we must intentionally advance or go to these power centers. Of course, we face this every day, but sometimes we kind of shy away, but we need to move purposefully and say, okay, this is where God wants me to be. This is where God wants me to fight these battles. And mm -hmm. he, is, he is with me and he has uh, you know, uh, empowered me to fight this. And if you look at the life of Jesus, we see that he was anointed to um, destroy the works of the devil. So we study the life of Jesus. How did he what, do, go about doing ministry? What did he do? And the same thing mm -hmm. we are called to do, to cast out demons, to, to heal the sick, to set the captives free, people, bring people out of... Uh, darkness into the light of God, into the kingdom of God. So that is um, mm. the, uh, what every believer is called to do and, uh, and, and doing that is enga engaging in a spiritual warfare and that is what we are called to do. Right, right. And I think uh, just to add to this whole understanding 
here about um, the local church being the army uh, is just to bring in this under, uh, understanding that uh, you know, uh, as, as an army, uh, 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 there is rank, there is order, there is discipline, mm -hmm. uh, and as we would see in a, typically in any army. And so we need to kind of also build that into the local church as, as we equip believers uh, with the weapons of, for warfare. We also need to let them know that they, they need to keep rank and order and respect leadership and learn to flow together uh, and to have really a military mindset and a military lifestyle that we are actually engaged in battle. So we always have to be alert and, mm -hmm. um, uh, and uh, there's this uh, call to discipline because uh, those engaged in warfare obviously will walk a life of uh, uh, discipline. And uh, it also means that an ar just as an army has strategy, uh, the local church therefore has to be strategic in what it does. Uh, not just random, not just copycats, you know, the world is doing it, so let's also do it. Mm -hmm. But rather to be strategic uh, as an army, uh, in, in the way we go, what we do, mm -hmm. uh, move with a sense uh, of purposefulness there. And also, you know, there will be casualties as in any war. Uh, we, there will be people amongst us who get hurt and we need to know how to take care of them mm. and uh, bring them back so that they can continue on in strength and so on. This, this whole truth about being the army of God, I think, mm. is, is very important and something that we need to really build into local, uh, see, built into uh, local churches and, and, and see churches raised up, uh, both to be pillar of truth mm. and uh, the army of God. Um, thank you so much. I think we are out of time and we'll just uh, uh, come together. we we'll just come back and pray for the, those who've been watching uh, the program today. On today's program, we have used publication titled The House of God for our study. In this manual, our goal is to discover God's blueprint for local churches and share practical ways to build and strengthen them. So write to us to get a free copy of the book or visit our website www.apcwo.org to download this publication and various other free resources that will help you in your spiritual journey. We trust you've enjoyed what we've discussed um, uh, on the episode today. We talked about two aspects of the local church being the pillar of truth and being the army of God. And we want to pray with you. We're really believing that God would release a grace and anointing into churches, uh, into communities of believers all across the world, wherever this program is being watched. And because I believe it's the heart, desire of God's heart to see churches that are raised up according to His blueprint. So we're going to pray together. And, and I want you to pray for your local church, the church that you are part of, asking that God will raise it to be a pillar of truth and a strong and victorious army uh, of God here on earth. Let's pray together. Father, we just thank you for what we were able to learn and discuss on the program today. Mm. Father, we're asking for a release of grace and anointing God to touch these churches that are, that are receiving this word and receiving this truth. God, and we pray for the raising up of churches to be pillar of truth uh, in their regions, in their societies, in their communities. And we are asking for churches, God, to be raised up as the army of God, uh, where men and women are equipped uh, for spiritual conflict and will do great damage to the works of darkness. Lord, let your church arise, we pray. And we thank you, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being with us on the program. Remember to get your free copy of the house of God. You can download it off our website or... Uh, write to us and request uh, your printed copy. And until next time, remember, live life the Jesus way.